I think my instincts tell me we should head out of the woods towards that lake over there. I said, okay. I go along. The rabbit says, my instincts tell me we should go north. I'm walking along, and the skunk looks up and he says, guys, that's funny. My instincts, but it doesn't tell me where to go. <laughs> Lesson, the parable of that is quite obvious. Never ask a skunk for directions. Seriously. Um, the, the analogy here is to make a good video, to digitally tell a story well, and that's what, it, that's what it is. It's telling a good story. You have to have a plan and a direction to go with it, a focus. Um, is my, let's see, let me get the, the slides up here. Let's see. And now you're all going to be doing a two minute, two Ms. Betsy minutes. told me, a, what, two to three minutes? Two to three. Two to three minutes. And I, I want to tell you that that is a, that's a challenging thing to keep it to two to three minutes. And that's why it's so important to have a plan and, and to follow that plan so that you can, you can keep it at that level. Because I can tell you in working with junior high students and high school students at 4-H camps that we tell them that <laughs> and we spend a day working with them on the different aspects of production. And without fail, um, they go off and they, they end up making it six or seven minutes. And we, we try to, to, get them, to get them shorter, but um, let's see. Ah, there we go. I'm on the wrong place here. Get to the front of it. Front of this here. Okay. So, um, the, the purpose is to tell a story, as, as, um, as I was saying. You know, um, I worked at Louisiana Public Broadcasting before, and, and we had a real interesting project. It was a great project working on environmental science videos for, for middle school students. And um, the one of my bosses was a, was a former science teacher, and we would clash because she wanted the videos to be boring. <laughs> and I knew, and I knew as a producer that we had to make it interesting if the kids wanted, were going to watch it. She would say, this is education, it's education, and the teachers, it's for the teachers. And I said, well, ultimately, the teachers aren't going to purchase the video if the students aren't going to watch it. So it's, it's got to be about entertainment, too. And so this kind of falls in line with what... Uh, Director George Lucas says there, education is simply, is, is simply a way of drawing facts isn't significant. Instead, we need to teach students how to tell a story. So um, my kind of boss on that project, I should have shared that quote with her. But we, 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 worked out a, we worked out a good resolution where the videos came out well, and I gave a little bit, she gave a little bit. Um, let's see, next. Like I said, um, one of the key things is having a focus. Um, and you start by, by knowing... Who is my audience? Now, I think for the two or three minute video, Betsy, am, am I correct in saying that the audience is the peers here? And prospective students for the program. Okay. Uh, but the environment and sustainability tracks going to be a single video about sustainability. Okay. So they'll need to decide who, they're, who that target is, whether it's. Good. Okay. Okay, great. Well, then, um, so y'all y'all going to. I would encourage y'all to make it very creative, you know, think out the box, be very creative, and use some of the techniques maybe that you see on other TV programs, um, and, have a, and stick to your focus. You don't want to get branch off into too many different areas. You want to be very focused, particularly for two or three minutes. Now, there are three <coughs> levels of production. We say there's pre-production, there's production, and there's post-production. Who can tell me what, what's, well, there's pre-production right there. It's everything before what, would, would anybody say? What do you think the production stage would be? Filmmaking. Right, the actual filmmaking or videotaping process. So that, 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 that's where you're actually obtaining media and, and recording it. Um, once again, this is kind of what we take students through with uh, the main things they want to do. They want to brainstorm and come, to, come up with an outline where everyone in, in your groups that you kind of come to a consensus of this is, how, this is what we want to do. Then you want to write a script. And, and I can't tell you how important that is. Because if you don't write a script, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to have a bunch of ideas, and you're going to go out in the field, and you're going to shoot all kinds of stuff, and you're going to come back and say, well, we don't need that, we don't need that. You're going to waste a lot of time. So this, this streamlines the process. And storyboarding, after you have the script, then you can kind of create a storyboard with a visual outline of what you want to, uh, what you want to shoot video of. This is a, a sample script here. We have a video on one side, audio on the other side, and it's, it's just very simple. And, I, and actually, I can send you a template of that as well that y'all can use. Um, and one thing you want to keep in mind when you write a script is you want to read it. You want to read it out loud, make sure it flows well, 
and, and time it to make sure the timing is, is good there, um, that it's not five or six minutes. And you want to write simply and, and, and um, in a real clear, concise way. That's very important. And, and write colorfully, too. Write very colorfully. Not, with, not too colorful, you know, like with cursing or anything like that, but <laughs> there's a storyboard. Um, this, you know, this just is a, is, a, is a help for you out there in the field to know what you need to shoot and how to shoot it. Any questions? So if y'all have any questions, just feel free to ask, okay? Um, once again, just another quote to back up the fact that script writing is very, very important. Um, and no, that's not Frank Kappa right there. That's a researcher a long time ago in the LSU Ag Center. <laughs> well, before the LSU Ag Center, the LSU, Louisiana Agriculture Experiment Station. So, uh, All right, some other things in the pre-production stages. Uh, a, a site survey. Uh, who, who has an idea of what that might be? It's kind of self-explanatory, I guess, but, uh, but what do you think might be going on in that? Anybody? Where we're going to take our picture. Right, and why would you, what, what would you, what, why would you want to, what would you want to do? And what do you think that is the purpose of that? Yeah. I guess check the lighting and, um, like, who all is in the area and be able to get in the picture. Very good. That's, that's absolutely right. And, you know, we, we always say that sunrise and sunset are the golden, that's the golden magical moments for video. So, you know, you, you, you want to maybe go, go out to a site a couple days or a day before and see what it looks like at that place and make sure your subject's going to be lit by if you want natural light. Uh, another thing to be wary of is, is your audio. If, you're, if you pick a place to shoot something and there's traffic all along, then it, you're not going to be able to hear the person talking. You can hear just as much car noise as, as you're the person talking. And that's another, audio is another important thing in, in pre preparing. And I would suggest and. Um, that you not use the microphone on the camera, but that you use a, like a like a wireless. This is a cheap. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they can get. You said that some of the. The uh, library has video cameras. The communication studio has them, and so multiple check is Okay. Device. But these are very easy to use and, and very much recommended because they're much better than that camera. That that ca the cameras will pick up good audio for the for the person shooting the video, but not really for the other person that's further away. So. Um, Keep that in mind. Let's see, what else we got? Yeah, if you're shooting in some place where you need permission, get that. Uh, take care of getting talent lined up and being at the same place at the same time. It can use costumes. Let's see, what else we got? Um, the day of. The day of, if you have to set up, that's, that's all part of it. Um, if you have to have props in place, uh, then you capture the video, um, shoot your interview, shoot your footage. One thing that we do, if we're doing an interview with somebody, it's a good idea to get footage of that person doing something. So you might shoot some any, inter, an interview with someone and then later say, gosh, we want to put in a narration here that says so-and-so is a leading expert and blah, blah, blah. Well, if you have them doing some work in a lab or something, then that can go to cover what you're talking about. So you always want to think about when you're shooting interviews and all, when you're doing narration, how visually can I cover this? What can I cover it with? Because if it's something that doesn't have good visual appeal, you might want to think about writing it a different way. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm going to show you all. Um, I'm going to show you all a little video. This is a this is a video that some. Um, and actually, I forgot to put it on here. Um, this is a video that some some young people at 4-H camp did. We worked with them, and it's kind. Of, I mean, you'll you'll see it's it's kind of kind of corny, but but very well done. I want you to look at it carefully. They use very good. Um, different angles, low angles, a point of view shot, like over the shoulder of someone looking, looking another way. And they use good sound effects and music. So I want you to see all these elements in this and, and see how it can really enhance um, what would normally be maybe a corny video, but, it, but it, it, it's kind of interesting. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. All right. How Girls versus Ninjas, it's called. And, and audio, is, it, is there? A, oh, here it is.
angles. <laughs> I think this is a good one. I think this is a good one. I think this is a good what you're shooting on, on your camera. 
Because if you're shooting it in high definition and you're using some software that's, there's some free software and cheaper software that you can use, they don't, they, you cannot edit high definition video in that software. So in that case, if that's what you have to edit on, you want to shoot standard definition. And typically you can shoot a widescreen that kind of looks like high definition, but a standard definition, you can edit in that. So make sure you know what that is before you, before you shoot. Um, and then there's something called shot sequence, and you saw a bunch of close-ups on those girls. There were wide shots, there were medium shots. Um, it's really important to kind of keep viewers' attention by varying that to tell your story. Here's some, uh, an instance of framing for high definition. Um, I think I, I would zoom in a little more than that, and maybe a little bit too much headroom. But um, you can see that the person here has what's called look room. It, it, it's, it's part of what I'm going to show you. I'll call the rule of thirds. That you'll notice when you watch TV when there's an inter interview going, someone's looking to the side, and that's just how um, we've come to, you know, look at interviews how they should be done. Because um, if he were in the center and he was looking at the camera for an interview, it would look funny. So this is what we call the rule of thirds. It just is a, a, a for, for photography and videography. It makes um, images a lot more interesting to have it off center. Off center. Just looks a lot more artistic. And in lines with where we're at right here on stubs, you, any y'all any classes in uh, coats? You do well, coats. I don't know if y'all know any about the history of him. I, I'm working on a documentary on the history of the Louisiana Agricultural Experiment Station. So um, I, I, I put this in here. Coats was the he taught maybe the first chemistry class in the whole country here at LSU. And he also was LSU's first football coach. And he co but he coached one game, and they lost to Tulane 34 to nothing, and I guess then they canned him. <laughs> but he also brought football here to LSU from John Hopkins when he came here. But look, here's an example of you know wide shot, medium shot, and close up. Now a close up would be probably more like that, but in relation to each other, you can you can see the, the variance in in, um, in images, and you want to you want to have a lot of diversity there with your with your shot selection. Um, do I need a teleprompter? No, you shouldn't need a teleprompter. And I'll give you all a trick to how to get around how to get around having to use a teleprompter. What we do is, you just like I was showing you here on this one before. If you want to, if you want to shoot something that lasts like uh, 30 seconds and you can't remember all of, all in that 30 second amount of time, shoot 15 seconds with a wide shot, and then or, or a medium shot and then shoot 15 seconds with a close-up, and you can cut them together seamlessly, and no one will ever know that you weren't, you know, someone didn't have another camera to shoot that other shot. So that, there's a way where you don't have to remember as much if you're trying to do a, what's called a stand-up in front of the camera. So that's just a little trick that we use that, that helps us out. Oh, um, uh, shaky video, be careful. I mean, they, they have image, you know, stabilizers on these, but, you know, try to use a tripod if you're doing a stand-up with somebody that's presenting the camera on camera. Lighting, very important. Very, very important to have your lighting right. Can one of y'all come up here for a second? I just want to show, come stand. Who's going to be a volunteer? All right, Mary Beth. <laughs> all right, Mary Beth, all right. All right, Mary Beth's right there. Now, we have, these are professional lights, but you can get like a little, a little desk lamp or something, and you can throw it on someone. You, you don't want it to be too hot on them, so you, you, I mean, you don't want it to, to blow out the iris to where they're totally overexposed, but um, now, there's a big difference between that and, and what it was, and what it looked like before. She stands out more than she did before, and there wasn't enough light in here because we've got that on. Now, to be, be very careful when you're shooting outside, you don't want this to happen. This is what we call backlighting. I mean, basically, if you backlight someone outside, they're going to be like a big black shadow. You know, you might see it okay in your viewfinder, but then you might get back to edit and say, "Gosh, dog, I just got a big black blob here." And you know, so believe me, when I was when I was younger, I, I actually did that for an interview before, learned the hard way. Said I can't use that. I need to re-interview that person. Um, okay, good job, yay! Way to go. <laughs> and just some tips to remember: uh, most cameras have autofocus on them, um, but. You know, if you, if you want a manual focus, what we do is we zoom in, we zoom all the way into somebody's eyes, and then we focus on the person's eyes in manual focus, and then we pull out, we can know that we're in focus. So that's that's the trick to know that, that you're in focus. Zoom into the eyes and then pull out. Um, is the lighting 
good, is audio good? Audio is a big part of video production, so make sure you you got earphones on when you're recording so that you know that you're getting audio. And just a rule of thumb, if you're shooting some, some footage of something, um, shoot at least six or seven seconds. You don't want to hit start and then hit stop and you've got two seconds of video. And then you go to put it in to your editing software and you got to slow-mo it and it just, you know, I mean, you can do slow-mos and, and speed up video and all, but, you know, you don't want, you want enough video to work with. Um, and we talked about varying your shot angles. Um, this, is a, this is a kind of a... a editing process that's very, very important. And here's why it's important. If I put my A-roll in, or, or if, I, if I decide, if I put my A-roll in, and, and I put my B-roll, and I'll show you all what that is. That, uh, that's, a, that's from a film term. This is, this is a, a timeline that you edit on. And your A-roll is just your main video of like your, your interviewee, or, um, or your interviewee, or you have some narration there. Um, that you're going to put, this is your main video, and then the B-roll is what you put on top. So someone's talking about something, talking about quantum physics, and then you see a, a you know, a researcher in the lab here to, to show what they're talking about. And then you have different layers of audio as well on your timeline. And it looks, it might look complicated, but this is very easy. I'm a dummy and I can do it, so I know that y'all can, because y'all are very bright. Um, but, but what happens here, if you, if you start putting music and sound effects in, before you finish these two, if you change your mind and so, say, you know what, I don't want that interview in there, you've cut a big hole in the middle of a music track or, you, or where you put sound effects. So if you follow this kind of guideline and, and, and put you know, special effects and sound effects and music in last, then you're streamlining the process. And so that's, that's very, very important. Any questions? I think we're almost done and I went over the timeline for you all. Um, is there anything else that I wanted to add? Well. You know, if you want to practice editing to music, is a good thing to practice your cut, your cut editing to the beats of music. Um, and you can also bring in pictures and do what's the Ken Burns effect. You can zoom in and you know do pans and things like that as well. So, um, so anyhow, y'all can have y'all y'all have a good time with this. And then after, you, you're going to want to save your video um, to present. What, what what I usually save it in is a Windows media file because it seems like that's the most standard thing to play on. If you save it as a QuickTime, some, you know, a lot of people don't have QuickTime, and it, you know, but everybody has Windows Media pretty much, so, um, and you can post it on YouTube and Vimeo as well, so you can get more play out of it. All right, so that's it. Any questions? That's a quick run through, and y'all are going to have fun. Just put a lot of energy and effort into it. Be creative, and if y'all have any questions, tell Miss Betsy. Y'all can y'all can contact me, or Miss Betsy can contact me, and I'd be more more than happy to help y'all in any way. No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. But it, it's on here. But I can. I can. I'll send that to you. Yeah.